through majestic forests, alpine valleys and crystal clear lakes, following the trails of wild animals in search of rare birds in places where no man had set a foot before. Precious, magnificent nature in all its diversity and grandeur in the documentary series Kazakhstan's Wildlife Sanctuaries. After departing from Astana and driving 130 kilometers, we arrived to the Korgaljin Reserve. Only barrier separates us from protected zone with the most extensive lake system in central Kazakhstan. We are accompanied by employees of the Varsa Kelmes Reserve. These kinds of meetings prove to be useful to those working in the field of nature protection. Reserve's employees share their experiences, work on problem resolutions and make proposals for reserve's management improvements. Korgaljin Reserve has plenty to show and teach. It is recommended to begin a journey at the visit center. The center is located in Korgaljin village. Big maps, interesting exhibits and dioramas introduce local flora and fauna to the visitor. Visit center Bird Paradise is the starting point of all eco routes. The Korgaljin Reserve is a spectacular place. Its area is 543,000 hectares. The flora and fauna of the reserve are very diverse. We are very proud of our corner of the earth. There are five guard posts around the area to ensure the protection of biodiversity of the park. State inspectors stationing here are on duty around the clock protecting nature. The nature here is truly amazing. Two groups of lakes with saline and fresh waters form an interesting ecosystem. The main water reservoirs are closed Lake Tengiz and open Lake Korgaljin. They are important nesting spots for millions of migratory birds. In 1976, the wetlands of the Tengiz Korgaljin Lake system were listed as a Ramsar site. In 2000, Lake Tengiz was listed as one of the world's most unique lake in international network living lakes. The colonies of pink flamingos inhabited this area since the time when the tengiz korgaljin depression was under the waters of the ancient Tethys Sea. Korgaljin Reserve was founded in 1968, aiming to protect numerous populations of birds. One of the areas of work of the reserve is work with children. Our goal is to teach children to love and respect nature. Children get to be creative and then we evaluate their works. Here a wonderful piece, Flamingo. Why flamingos? First of all, it was dedicated to the Flamingo Festival. Secondly, Flamingo is a unique bird and is a brand of our reserve. The Ceylon Lake Tengiz consists of the main reaches, the Big Tengiz and the bay in the northeastern part, the Lesser Tengiz. The shores of the lake are low and marshy. Numerous islands appear or disappear depending on the water level in the lake. It is not an easy task to get there by car, especially during the rainy season. Upon drying, sticky mud becomes hard as stone. Because of this, we couldn't reach the Lake Tengiz this time. Pink flamingos chose these hard-to-reach, swampy places as nesting spots. Flamingos come in early April. They build cone-shaped nests. They are beautiful, graceful birds up to one and a half meters high. Flamingos are pink due to the presence of Artemia salina brine shrimp in their diet. The staff of the reserve conducts annual records of pink flamingos. These swamps are only accessible to small aircrafts. The registry is conducted with the assistance of the Kazakhstan Association for Biodiversity Conservation. 
We can only examine every corner of the reserve when there is no risk of scaring away the colony. We can do it during the first half of the summer. It is forbidden to fly over the reserve. It may cause stress and disturb the colony. But in August, when chicks already learned how to fly, we conduct aerial studies. On average, the colony of flamingos varies from 20 to 40,000 individuals. A maximum of 70,000 birds was observed in 1979. Apart from birds, there are 42 mammal species inhabiting the territory of the reserve. They can be seen on wonderful photos shot by the staff of the reserve. Today we took pictures of Turkmenian kulan, shrikes and thrushes. When you take your camera with you, you are geared up, you see a bird and you can get a shot of a beautiful moment right away. Alexei Koshkin has his own tricks on how to take great shots of animals and birds in the wild. He dedicated almost 40 years to preservation deeds. Over this period, he thoroughly studied the nature of his native land. He's a true man of nature, a local historian. He willingly shared his experience on bird watching. In order to do so, you need to build a height using natural materials like grass or reeds. You need to make sure there is no dampness, that you are warm and comfortable. The height shouldn't stick out over the horizon line. If you plan on taking pictures of flamingos and simply place a store-bought height on the bare salt marsh, the flamingos won't come closer than 300-400 meters. This distance is too big for a good shot. Therefore, the height should be much smaller. Or you may try and dig yourself a pit. To be able to witness and get good shots of the wildlife, one must be acquainted with secret mechanisms controlling their lives, says Alexei Koshkin. Once you learn, then you get the best pictures of rare birds and animals. It's hard to shoot flamingos on a big lake like this. There are many inaccessible islands and salt marshes. Flamingos nest in places inaccessible to predators and people. Unfortunately, this doesn't always protect their chicks. The nests on low-lying islands are periodically washed off by waves, resulting in death of the colony. The breeding is not always successful. Lake Orgaljin is almost completely covered with dense thickets of reeds and cattail. The lake is fed by the waters of the river Nura and groundwater. In spring, the fresh water is supplied by the river Kulan Pes. Species from the Red Book of Kazakhstan are nesting here. We saw a hooper swan with chicks swimming in the middle of the lake. The bird teaches chicks what to eat, how to hide from enemies and so on. As the sun was setting, we noticed a representative of a rare endangered species, a Dalmatian pelican. Numerous weeders can be seen almost everywhere around. The most common of them is red-necked phalarope, the inhabitant of coastal areas. Quick movements let phalaropes catch insects bustling on a water surface. Little stints inhabitants of muddy shores are running around on their short legs searching for food. These small fussy birds are constantly on the move. There is an interesting shrubby plant growing near the lake called Nitraria shoberi. Its local Kazakh name is Aktiken. The plant is interesting 
произрастает только здесь. Вы... This plant is interesting because it grows only here. It won't grow on good soils. It only grows in salty soils. Therefore, the name Nitraria from Nitro, salt. It bears fruits in August. Its berries are eaten by all: startlings, sparrows, gulls, and mammals. Both badgers and cows, and wild boars and foxes. Everyone eats this berry. Downhill from Nitraria grows asparagus. We know this plant as decorative. It is used to decorate bookcases. In the wild, this plant prefers coastal salt marshes. The fascinating beauty of Lake Korgaljin for centuries was inspiring people to create poetic and musical masterpieces. This is the birthplace of the legendary Kazakh song Dudarai. But legends are born in our time as well. Alexey Koshkin shares one of them with us. In the old days, the mother of Sarayarka had two children, beautiful Nura and Batur Ishim. One day she told them, my children, I heard that our grandfather, the gray-haired Tengiz, is ill, and his banks are covered with salt. Go visit him and share your life-giving waters with him. Nura and Ishim went along the steppe. They walked for a long time, and soon Ishim got sick of it. He said, I am tired of this hot steppe. There is nothing interesting here. I am heading north to serve a great ocean. And so he made a sharp turn. Those who remember the map, Ishim makes a sharp turn near here to the north. The river Nura continued its way. Her stops were marked with lakes. The banks of the Tengis were once again filled with life-giving water. Waters turned fresh again, birds flew in. The legend reflects the change of natural cycles, dry and high water periods in the life of the lake system. These factors affect the number of bird populations and, importantly, the brine shrimps Artemia salina. In autumn, the crayfish lay eggs, or cyst, which tolerates winter frosts quite well. There is a demand on international medicine market for these cysts, which attracted poachers. A few years ago, poaching was a big problem at the reserve. But in recent years, nature itself has come out in defense of the inhabitants of the Korgaljin lakes. In spring, Tengis tributaries bring a significant amount of fresh water, making the lake less saline, resulting in reduction of shrimp populations. In addition, the high water level turns the shore of the lake into impassable swamps. According to the biology of Atimia, it lives with mineralization from 10 mg to 230 and above, and the lake desalinated to the level of 50 mg, and that was it. Eggs were gone, and poachers left us, thank God. Korgaljin Reserve is a strictly protected natural area. Therefore, there are only few tourists here. We met travelers from Germany and Switzerland who visited our country during the International Exhibition Expo 2017. Foreign tourists who visited the Korgaljin Reserve receive a lot of information about the flora and fauna. They are very surprised at the spaciousness of our region. They take pictures, make videos and generally are very happy to have visited our reserve. The pristine beauty of the nature of Tengiz Korgaljin lakes, endangered birds and animals, make this region an interesting spot for studying fauna and flora and preserving biological diversity. But its main assets are people who devoted their lives to the preservation of the area. We have seen this on numerous occasions during our stay at the Korgaljin National Reserve. Our memory will always preserve stories and legends of this poetic land, the wonderful picturesque oasis of the steppe of Sarayorka.